Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to another edition of Biafra History and the Slave Trade, a reply part 2. And our very important notice to you, our dear viewer, that it is never our intention to offend anyone with our videos. It is not also our intention to suggest, insinuate or preach hate towards any group, race, tribe or person. There is also no propaganda or any deliberate attempt to misinform anyone with our videos. Please look for the books, journals, magazines or other publications or sources referenced and study them yourself. Remember, I am going to be me as I am and you can beat me or jail me or even kill me but I am not going to be what you want me to be, Stephen Biko. And from WMH Holcomb, free Negroes everywhere will ultimately die out in the presence of white civilization. The British Civilization Society will depopulate Africa instead of enlightening it. The safety of the Negro lies, first of all, in his wise and humane subordination in some form to the white race. And in part one of this series, we issued a response to the question that Biafra was in Cameroon, and we also tried to show that Biafra existed before 1967. And please remember that those talking about Biafra being in Cameroon do not also support Ambazonia. Remember, Ambazonia is also seeking independence from the same foot soldiers of the slave masters and nobody is supporting them. Now they are telling you Biafra is in Cameroon. If you told them, okay, Biafra is Ambazonia, let this one stay, they will still agree because it's the same foot soldiers in both Nigeria and Cameroon. And remember also that that Ambazonia, the Southern Cameroon actually, used to be a part of Nigeria until 1961 when the slave masters conducted a sham referendum to hand it back to Cameroon as a German possession. You need to understand what colonialism is all about and that all those countries are European possessions like Nigeria is a British property as well as the Americans. So there's one thing you have to bear in mind and Cameroon is a British, French and of course German property. You need to bear all those things in mind. So whatever they are telling you, you need to understand what the games of the slave masters are. And we also tried to show that Nigeria existed before 1914 and we saw that Biafra was a kingdom and how Biafra lost its sovereignty. And again, please remember that kingdom as it were is based on the slave master's language and definition. Remember, they came as conquerors, they came as slave hunters. So they looked at what the people were doing and defined them in their own words, not in the words of the Negroes. So you will be expecting to see a king, whereas they were ruled by the priests in a semi-theocratic state kind of thing. So the slave master did not fully understand it, but he went and wrote his book and used it to deceive them and of course give them the golden calf which is as powerless as you can imagine. And before we go into our main topic of today as it were, we look at Negro unity or what? You may have heard how Igbos or southern part of Nigeria are not united and you may have also heard how the Fulani headsmen are dealing with them, killing them in their numbers and believing that it's because they can unite and you have tried to examine where the disunity is coming from. And so we try to get you to imagine if the slave master told you that the world is millions of years old and have you tried to find out the oldest Negro in history, just try in your own way, research it however you want and find out when the first Negro on earth was ever recorded, as in his name and where he is from. Just find out that simple answer. And then, if the slave master lied about the slave trade, the way of life of the Negroes, have you tried to fact check every other thing he told you? Remember, if somebody lies to you once, lies to you twice, you don't need a fortune teller, you don't need a magician to tell you that almost every other thing he's going to tell you must be a lie. So how long will it take you before you go back in time to find out what the lies of the slave masters look like? 
And as regards Negro unity proper, you may have heard or been hearing how Negroes are not united, hence they are easily enslaved. You may also have attributed the Fulani Hatsman killings to the absence of Negro unity, and you wondered if they were originally disunited or they acquired the disunity along the line or something induced it or something caused it and so on and we try to give you an armed robber analogy here so that you can understand why the slave master claimed that the negroes were like this they can unite because they do not have brains of humans you need to understand who the slave master is a subtle beast so let's look at the armed robber analogy here for you to understand when the slave master says they can unite because they are not human you understand where he's coming from and what he's doing so imagine if armed robbers came to rob a house with about 10 to 20 occupants including women and children the armed robber here would be the slave master or his slave hunting partners like the arabs the barbers the Tuaregs, the fulanese and so let's say an alarm is raised and all the occupants wake up and then there is bound to be different opinions as to what approach should be adopted for example the men might say let's fight the armed robbers the women might say let's run away the children might just be shouting not understanding what is going on others may choose to run in and hide somewhere a lot of confusion will be there because a robber is coming that's ideally how the slave master came to the conclusion of negro disunity and how the negroes are not human they can't come together to fight anybody whereas he is the one that is behind the disunity so do you then see how the slave master is the armed robber but the negroes who are his victims are murderers and barbarous or described as such if you were to ask anyone on earth today they were going to tell you that black people are murderers they are inhuman they are heartless and all that whereas it is the slave masters slave hunting partners that are doing that if you noticed what we told you about the chinese invite to nigeria remember we always ask you that question have you tried to find out who invited those chinese at least today it has been proven that they were not doctors they were just invited for construction work don't be surprised it is the pipeline that they are laying from the niger delta to the middle east that they came to do remember these are all partners in the slave trade they are still working together and using their brainless foot soldiers unfortunately like the army and police so you see where an adult man is paid just about 800 dollars a month or 300,000 naira and then you call him to come and kill somebody who is agitating for freedom or asking for better conditions of life and he does so with a gun that is worth more than his lifetime earnings what will you classify those people as that's what you see in the army like the nigerian army because they were the slave hunters of old they were only renamed so that they were renamed never removed their attributes as slave hunters and so, do you not wonder how the same Negroes who are victims of slave raids or razzias, as the Muslims will call it, turned out to have been the same that sold themselves? Do you not wonder how that happened? Remember, the simple trick the slave master plays is he positions his foot soldiers so he can hold a conference now on the slave trade and his foot soldiers will come there and say we did it, we are unhappy that we did it. Now, you will be thinking that they are the same with those that were capturing and selling and trading with the slave masters you wouldn't know that it is the slave hunters talking about what they did but you think they are the same with the negroes whereas they are not we will show you how they play this trick it's a very simple thing but you will say it it will be very clear because they have not stopped so the future will help you understand whatever we're saying today or if you can pick up these materials and study them yourself that's all you need to do Apply common sense to the narrative and you will understand where the slave master is coming from and where he is heading to. However, as this is more or less a response video, you remember the comment we responded to in our last edition of this series and you remember the comment that said, thanks for all your lectures, I have learned so much, I have a people who always argue 
that Biafra was Cameroon and had nothing with the Iwos or we just claimed the name and all because of the bite of Biafra named by the Portuguese. Now remember, in all they have written here, these are things the slave master's foot soldiers tell them. Remember the slave master tells his foot soldiers what lies they tell because they are not intelligent enough. So when you see them do some gerrymandering in their elections or do some things that you think are politically sophisticated don't think they could have thought that way they do not have that common sense it is the slave master that uses them the only time they develop any semblance of common sense is in their ability to work together that's the only thing it's not that they work together because they can or they normally would but they work together because they hate the negroes and you have to remember, based on the armed robber analogy we gave you, they are like armed robbers. So armed robbers going to rob a bank or anything, they will always be united because they are going on the same mission. They are going to steal. They are going to kill, maim, and destroy. That's the same thing that is happening. So now you are looking at a peaceful community the same way they used to be during the slave trade. And then the robbers that are attacking them are coming, which is the Fulani headsmen like you see today. So they will be united naturally. It doesn't take anything to see that they should be united in order to do that. It doesn't make them more human. It just means they have an ulterior motive which is totally different and a totally different video will be made to explain that further. But our interest is for you to see what we are responding to in this video. Not necessarily this time whether or not it is in Cameroon. And remember, if you were to go to Cameroon, Ambazonia is also looking for independence or freedom from this same group because the slave master hides behind them so if they say it's in cameroon let's say it's ambazonia the same slave master that conducted a sham referendum in 1961 does not have anything to say about biafra and ambazonia today for you to see that he is solidly behind whatever you see happening there otherwise the same way he conducted a referendum in 1961 that ceded southern cameroon back to cameroon should have been the same way he will say if they want independence today let's give it to them likewise if they ceded bakasi to cameroon the same way they did that they could have also used their food soldiers like we tell you the biggest harvest of the fools used by the slave masters are found in the army and in the police so the moment they are giving guns they believe they are out of this world so that's one thing the slave master uses against the negroes so when you see those people the army and the police those are not really negroes except where they have been conditioned to be who they are now working for the interests of massa but otherwise they lack humanity they lack common sense so when you see them or see the negroes through them you will be seeing a barbaric or wicked heartless person and you will forget that those were the slave hunters of old. The slave master just rejects stuff small and then he's still using them the same way he did back in the days. However, from that last video, we got some other comments that we needed to include in this response as well. So you understand who the foot soldiers are and who the victims of their man's inhumanity to man are. And so we got this comment from someone going by the name Mr. himself alone. Do you challenge Maze Imakano LVI or something along those lines? Those Igbo that were sold were all just you guys criminals and products. That is what Mr. Imakano LVI or whatever calls the slaves. Then further down he says the council of Arrow elders claims that the Igbo brought criminals or people they did not like and wanted destroyed so the arrow sold criminals who were brought they did not have to go and get anyone the spokesperson for that same council also said the arrow did not owe the Igbo reparations since it was legal and everyone was doing it he said the Igbo killed twins and buried people alive i will return with his name if you wish to challenge arrow elders with books now remember that's how the slave master operates these are some of those his foot soldiers their duty is to help embellish the lies they have to propagate every lie the slave master comes with so you see the slave master nobody is talking about him he was a slave hunter nobody talks about it people like francis drake were slave hunters the likes of hawkins were even midnights 
King James was a slave trader. Nobody talks about them. But you see the foot soldiers are busy accusing the victims of being behind it because they know they were the slave hunters. And you probably noticed how the Nigerian army and the Cameroonian army declared anyone asking for freedom as a terrorist. Remember, they were the slave hunters. So they understand slavery more than the victims. So the moment you talk about freedom, they get incited because that's how the slave master has conditioned them because those armies are trained and equipped by the slave masters believe it or not if you doubt us conduct your research come back and put it here we are using these comments to show you how the foot soldiers reason so and how they play their cards remember he is saying this now they can call it symposium the slave master will organize that symposium because he has the money and the clout to do that then they will come and deliver a lecture telling you that it was done by them and then the whole world will believe it could have been by them because when they look at them they see people that look alike but they won't know that it's totally different people there is no sensible person on earth that the brother will ask for a job and he will take a gun from another person somewhere else and go and kill that his brother there is no sensible person on earth that can do that so you see if you see or look at the negroes from the lens of people like the nigerian army or cameroonian army you will be seeing a barbarous murderous animal but when you look at the facts when you look at the historical records you will see that the slave hunters are still being used the same way they were used in the past and here is another comment from one buffalo buffalos or whatever and it says my dearest brother you have always mentioned in many of your videos just as you have done here too that Igbo parents and traditional rulers Arochuku priests never and couldn't have sold the slaves given that there was no place they could have kept the slaves but Mazin and the Kano in his broadcast has always affirmed the contrary please how can you reconcile this thanks so we're going to explain that to you shortly remember all they look for is anything that is coming from the Negroes themselves so for example you see how they use Professor Gates they will tell you that the whole slave trade is a lie you will hear then Kahlo will tell you that it never happened then he will turn around and tell you that Professor Gates told them that only 377,000 were gotten as slaves from Africa. The same person telling you that it never happened is the same person telling you that only 377,000 uh, people were gotten from Africa all in a bid to claim that the Negroes are aborigin and save the slave master from being a slave hunter he was. You see how smart the slave master plays. So you notice that he uses Negroes or people that look like Negroes the same way he uses Obama to do it. If you notice, Obama is the only former president that jumps out against his successor. It's only him. So ordinarily, when you look at Obama, you will think, oh, that's how black people are. That's how Africans are. That's why Africa is the way it is. You won't know he's just being teleguided and being used by the slave masters because they want somebody who looks like the Negroes. We won't go any further on this to tell you exactly what games they are playing. But if you want to go and look at it yourself, just look at what happened to Lincoln when he tried to free the slaves and then compare it to what is happening today and try to connect the dots. There are a lot of things behind the scenes that you may not see unless you dig back in time, in history, into the archives to understand what is happening. And as expected, you'll see that Mr. himself alone replied him to say he can't reconcile it and still fully stand by Nnamdi the Kano. Remember, Nnamdi the Kano is somebody that has used his wisdom to torment the slave master's foot soldiers. So they hate him with a passion. That's why they went, the slave hunting army, that is the Nigerian army, went to murder him in his house. That is a civilian, but they mobilized the whole battalion. Now ask them, okay, why do you mobilize a battalion for just an individual? But that's because that's how they've been conditioned. They see him as an escaping slave or trying to give wisdom to the slaves. That's why they wanted to kill him. Remember, the army was a slave hunting militia. If you doubt it, we ask you today, conduct your research, challenge us here. That's what it was. It was renamed Nigerian Army in 1863. That's why in the last series, we showed you that Nigeria existed before 1914. Because some people will jump to the fact that how could the army have existed before 1914? Nigeria was allegedly created in 1914 because the slave master came with that lie, believing that the Negroes never look back in time 
or looking forward at any moment. But further down, David Christian replied him, Nandekan is not well informed on this aspect. But we're going to take a little time to explain what is going on to you. Remember, their foot soldiers just run with what Masa is saying. It's not like they come in with any facts. No matter what books you bring, they will just look for one little place and anchor on it. The slave master understands this. That's why you see that the so-called African Americans, they are busy claiming to be aboriginal claiming to be Indians, claiming to be whatever, without spending time to ask themselves, why is the slave master interested in Africa? Whereas we are running away and he's misinforming them about Africa. They should have asked themselves that simple question, but they will never, or he won't allow them to. That's why he always handpicks people to place in certain positions and uses them to misinform the Negroes. Because there is no benefit in whether they are aboriginal or not. They will just save the slave master from the fact that he was a slave hunter and a murderer. And further here, Mr. himself alone again says, At the Renaissance, in 1434, the Portuguese raided the Guinea coast, but not any part of Benin or Biafra or any place that is now South Nigeria. They did not reach the delta until 1472. The arrow came into being as a mixture of Apa Ibo and Ibibio in the 1600s. Most information on the Ibo and their role in the slave trade comes from oral tradition. You see why he put that oral tradition there is simply Islamic takia. He knows that we are going to ask for references and citations. Now oral traditions, ask him who and who gave you these oral traditions. He's not going to give you any sensible person because no one alive today was alive then. So there is no way he could have been from oral tradition and no one else in Igbo land knows what he's talking about. The only thing he's going to go bring is one hungry author apparently commissioned by the slave master to write what the slave master tells him to write. That's all. But he knows that he can't provide that even. So that's why he said it's done by oral tradition. That's how the slave master's food soldiers operate. They come with a lie. They impose that lie on you. And if you don't agree, then they want to kill you. That's all they do. Now, if you want to understand who these people are, remember there are demonstrations in the U.S., claiming Black Lives Matter, which we know is more political than it is humanitarian. And you notice that it has been hijacked as well. You notice that they also demonstrated in a place like Nigeria. Now, ask yourself, why would they demonstrate in Nigeria? The army and police will not come out to kill them. But if you demonstrate for freedom in Nigeria, or if the police or Nigerian army kill innocent people and you come out to demonstrate, they will kill you more. And the slave master will turn the other way. Ask yourself that question. If we were the same people, do you think they will be killing their brothers that way? The answer will be no. Because the army was a slave hunting militia. It was only renamed to Nigerian army in 1863. Those simple things are things you have to look at. So when you see them demonstrating about Black Lives Matter, they killed a lot of people in Kaduna on the same day. Are those people not blacks too? You see that they lack humanity. They lack common sense. That's who they are. So when you look at them, their lack of humanity and common sense will also rub off on the Negroes who are incidentally their victims. And you won't understand, but the slave master knows all this. That's why you notice that the slave master is able to appoint only those that are pro-slavery. That's why the slave master is also able to even rig the elections in favor of pro-slavery candidates. And those candidates will always work for the interests of Massa. And again, you see that the army will also work for the interests of Massa. And come to think of it, if you remember when they used the former army called Obasanjo to seed Bakasi to Cameroon, ask yourself if Obasanjo supposedly was brothers with those Bakasi people and he was to seed his people away to another country, wouldn't he have done something for them? build a house for them or do something for them? But then you see one little boy in Europe we call an elder somebody's father in Africa and tell him that he wants his brothers to now become somewhere or foreigners or stateless or something and he gets done. That's because he was in the army. The reason they wanted people like Jonathan out by all means was because he wasn't in the army. So he doesn't have that mindset. He hasn't been conditioned as a slave hunter the same way people in the army are. So they couldn't get him to do certain things certain way. That was why they wanted him out by all means. But going forward, the same user says, The Renaissance, 
Number one, you know full well that the slave trade lasted hundreds of years. So this is his explanation as to how the priests could have done it for 400 years. Remember, these people they are accusing here is not recorded anywhere that they conducted a slave raid. So he goes further to say, so it would have been different priests over time. Second, you also know that the people who blame the arrow say that they had a network of young hoodlums basically to conduct raids for them. They also had secret deals whereby if your community decided they did not like you when you would go to the Arachuku shrine to make an offering, they would arrange to sell you and fake your death. It is well known throughout Igbo land how scandalous they are aware. I am African American. Nothing about Igbo is routinely thought in America. I just happen to be curious about West Africa because I know my people came from there. So I read about different West African tribes. When I read that, Aro did ABC and the author of the book or whatever has an Igbo name, why should I not believe it, especially if author after author keeps saying the same thing? So now, you see, he just believes it because it's coming from an Igbo. It is the same technique where the slave master will present to you somebody that looks like Obama and use him to sell the gay propaganda to you. That's exactly the same technique. It was the same way they used Crowder to sell Christianity to the Negroes because they tried for over 300 years. The people rejected the religion, telling them that there is no way the Almighty could have written a book and it will not fall from the sky for you to understand the games they played. We will look at it in a different video. But our interest is for you to see his argument. The only reason he believes this is because it was written by authors he claims are Igbo. You notice how Achebe was used to twist the Osu system to something it totally was never. But the slave master had the correct thing in his own books. You see how smart he plays. But then Achebe wrote his own claiming that there was Osus. They come into a church and people lived and all that. Whereas those were the priests and the Nazarene that would ostracize those that joined Christianity. So when the slave master conquered the area, he now turned the tables on them and ostracized them too. And that's exactly how that came to be. And here again, the same user goes on to try to explain how they got the names they have in slavevoyages.org, which they are concocting. We have proven that in our, one of our videos, but then, Let's see what he says. He says, the reason why they had the names of some, not all of the slaves is simple. Many slaves spoke Pigeon English from trading with the British. Now remember, the British was the last joiners to the slave trade. They didn't even join. It was the Portuguese, the Spaniards, and the Dutch before the British joined 150 years after. So you see how he has concocted this. Now these people can lie. These are the slave masters, food soldiers. They can lie. That's why if you catch them, you will see how they will twist the lie. If you remember when they came up with the Achibok, the same way they fake all these things they are doing in the Americas today, you saw that they claimed that the robbers, when they were asked how they were feeding the 300 women, the girls that they allegedly kidnapped, they said they went to the food store first and took food. The slave master knows these are all lies, but they used their media preponderance to propagate it at that time. But then if you were to ask how many days will food last, you will discover that they were just lying. They made it up, they faked it, that's who they are. They can lie. But then you see what he wrote here. There is no book on earth he got it from. He just cooked it up. You see how he's saying they speak pidgin English. Now remember, at that time, even if you spoke pidgin English, have you started writing your name in English? Remember the Igbos wrote in CBD at that time. So there is no way their name would have been written in English when they were writing in CBD. It was the conquest that destroyed in CBD totally. And then they now started writing English. They brought what they used to call Omo Committee and all that, which is subject of a different video. We had tried to show you that those things are lies because at that time the chi sound in Igbo used to be written as TSH. That's why you see that something like Lake Chad then used to be written with TCH instead of just CH as you see today we had shown this in our last video we tried to show that they are lying they were concocting those names above all the names they are writing there do not even make sense 
in any language at all, including the Igbo, they claim they were sold from Bonnie. There is no language in the area that those names represent today. But he still wants us to believe that they had their names, which we know is a lie, which we shall continue to prove and debunk. That's why you, they put Professor Gates there, because they know that the Negro will believe it if he sees somebody that looks like him there. But we're going to show you that the slave master is never smart. He can only be smart when you think he is. He's just a brutal murderer like his foot soldiers do. And so he goes further to say the British were recapturing slave ships and freeing the slaves when the names were recorded back when Britain was perpetuating the trade, they did not care about whatever. But our interest is for you to see, the British were capturing the slave ships when they had started stopping the slave trade. So they will capture a slave ship and take it to Sierra Leone and free them in where you call Freetown today. That's why it was named Freetown. Now, you might wonder why didn't they take them back to wherever they were coming from. The slaves were not acquired from one village. Remember we had read and shown where they said they wouldn't carry people with the same language in the same slave ship. So at that time, the British were stopping the slave trade. So they mounted their naval warships on the high seas. So any slave ship will be diverted to Sierra Leone. The people are now freed and rehabilitated there because they know that the slave hunts meant that their villages would have been destroyed and above all, they can't even find their ways home. That's the truth of it. Even if they did, there will be no father or mother. These are women and children mostly, which we are going to see an image of shortly. So now you see how that his lie collapses right there. Now he claims that the British were capturing slave ships. How can the British capture a slave ship when slave voyages are telling us that these are the slaves that embarked in Bonnie, they were now taken to Brazil or taken to elsewhere. But you see how he's now lying to tell us that the slaves written there were those that were captured and returned to Sierra Leone. Because if the slave ships were captured by the British, they will be returned to Sierra Leone, to Freetown and get free. So there is no way they will now be again written as the slaves that were shipped to Brazil. Because if you look at the slave voyages, they give you where the ships or the slaves allegedly embarked and where they were discharged or landed in the new world. But then, this is something they are choreographing. They are all fake concocted names if you notice in all the slave narratives you will discover that they don't have their original names they always have the slave masters given name and at least you remember the likes of james somerset and remember too if the slaves had a name it will defeat the slave masters lie that the negroes were beasts living on trees they had no languages they had no names they had no clothes because that's how the slave master presented the negroes to their people at that time to justify the slave trade so if they had a name how can you then say they are animals because at that time the argument was that they were not human so that's why they were supposedly beasts of burden and this other user now went on to say at the renaissance well this is a topic that needs to be seriously debated i was not there when this evil was perpetrated Mazinand Khan was not there, for which reason he doesn't only argue about the arrows selling the slaves, but contrary to your position, also claims that some Yorubas were sold too, you too were not there. We all get our information from written and oral history, so there could stroke must have been some sort of misinformation, especially as the slave master would do anything to escape the guilt of his evil action. But at the same time, I am sure the oral tradition we received from generations to generations on this topic couldn't have lied to us. Nevertheless, Mazin and Kano is not infallible, neither are you. But since we have two opposing positions here about one thing, the two cannot at the same time be correct. Only three things are possible here. It is either the arrow sold the slaves or that they were not sold but captured by the slave master or some in bracket or majority of the slaves were captured while some were sold and I tend to believe the last but the truth of this matter will be established with time. There is nothing too difficult to descend from this whole argument back and forth. If you look at the recorded history, he never wrote that the arrow sold the slaves anywhere except in the slave masters revisionism books of recent years which they started concocting because they have a plan and above all there is no way a bunch of priests 
could gather 400 people it's impossible which we are going to prove shortly or in a subsequent video we shall prove it beyond any reasonable doubts but we have to remember that when a lie is told often enough it begins to look like the truth the priests couldn't have remember the arab priests were raided by the british and nigerian army in 1901 and 1902 so if they were the ones that were selling the slaves to them why will you go and raid the people that were selling the slaves to you even if we choose to say they may have chosen to stop it that's why they did it let's look at that raid first and then we take it from there so let us reference the making of northern nigeria by captain cwj or and this was the late political department northern nigeria and published 1911 at least this must be an insider captain means he's of the british army and then he was in northern nigeria too so we see how they raided the arrow and it says in the spring of 1901 sir frederick lugard proceeded home on leave of absence mr william wallace assuming administrative charge of the protectorate until his return in the autumn now remember the south was a protectorate the north was a colony after the defeat of the caliphate you need to understand it we shall look at it in a subsequent video but our interest is for you to see that there is no way the arrow could have and these people never recorded it anywhere before the slave masters revisionism brought it and we shall look at it in a subsequent video it goes further to say the same year a second contingent of troops between 600 and 700 strong was sent from the protectorate to the ashanti war leaving in april and returning in october so this contingent of troops were there and they were selling slaves that's what you want to tell us then he goes further to say in the later month a contingent 300 strong was further sent to southern nigeria to assist in an expedition against the Arrow tribes in that protectorate, this being the third occasion within two years on which northern Nigeria was called upon to provide a contingent for operations outside the protectorate. So does this suggest to you that they went to raid them because of the slaves? The answer will be no, but we'll look at it in a different video. Let's just move forward with this response about Biafra and the slave trade. And so, let us reference Cloran, Knights of the Ku Klux Klan, and it was published 1916, and there we are told that we, the Order of the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan, reverentially acknowledge the majesty and supremacy of the Divine Being and recognize the goodness and providence of the same. So we want to ask you this question, what makes you believe that the slave master could have brought you the genuine creator of heaven and earth instead of the golden calf please put your reasons whatever makes you think or believe that is possible put it in the comment section we are waiting for it but then our interest is where it says we recognize our relation to the government of the united states of america the supremacy of its constitution the United States thereunder and the constitutional laws thereof. However, that's not our interest. Our interest is further down where it says we avow the distinction between the races of mankind as same has been decreed by the Creator. Take note of that very well. And we shall ever be true in the faithful maintenance of white supremacy and will strenuously oppose any compromise thereof in any and all things. Now, remember very well too that these same people will give guns to some people in places like Nigeria and Cameroon to be killing their brothers and you still want to tell us that those that are killing their brothers are the same with them supposedly if they were brothers would they be doing that it's only a fool that will do that but when you allow yourself to look at the Negroes from the image of the slave hunters of old you will think they are the same people which is exactly what the slave master is playing at he knows that without the enemy within the enemies outside cannot harm us like the african adage goes so that's why he has the enemies within if you notice things like biafra and ambazonia if he can get the fulanese into biafra or ambazonia he will give them independence the next day knowing that it will be a futile waste of time with the enemy within inside there it doesn't matter how you look at it look at nigeria for example and ask yourself how can you have a brother 
who you will go to to say, I have a problem, my roads are not built, my classrooms are dilapidated, and he takes a gun from an outsider and starts killing people. And you tell us such a person has humanity and common sense. If you think that is possible, please put it in the comment section. However, one thing we wanted you to notice in this is the book is called Gloran. And we all believe or are made to believe that it was the Arabs that own Islam and their own is Quran. So we want you to dig and investigate further on both this book, the Ku Klux Klan, the Knights Templar, and the Quran itself, as well as the Islamic religion, and see the relationship between all of them and still explain to us how you believe on earth that the slave master could have given you the creator of heaven and earth to protect you when he's coming to rob you. This is like believing that an armed robber can give you submachine guns to keep in your house so that when he's coming to rob you, he can kill you. That's ideally what it is. If you ever can believe that the slave master brought you anything more than the golden calf, be it Islam, Christianity or Judaism, we want you to explain to us what makes you believe that that is possible and why they are not working if they were the genuine creator of heaven and earth.